G'day fans, and we're back talking about Star Trek Discovery. Now, I don't know about you, but I haven't seen an episode of Star Trek all year. <laughs> How good is that? So we've actually got the episode, uh, There Is A Tide, and it is turning. Yeah, that's as tides often do, unless you're with Blondie, and of course, you know, the tide is high, but uh, <laughs> that's from back in the 80s. Let's move on from there, shall we? It's Dags and FPS joining you in 2021. Do we look cooler? Do we look happier? Yes, we do, because Star Trek Season 3 is almost at an end. Dude, what did you think of There Is A Tide? I thought there was a should have been an extra word in the title because it's just it seems like it ends so quickly just like the episode but we'll get into that shortly very good stuff now of course we start off with the ship being fired upon by the viridian it's like holy guacamole and if you're a bit like me and you didn't watch this the the recap at the start you're thinking oh okay the ship's getting pounded pretty hard and then of course you realize the Syrah and her troops are all on board it's part of the trojan horse ploy to get themselves into the federation which was kind of cool um the thing that i really enjoyed is good old vance he's not stressing you know the discovery's coming they've got no communication he's going yeah, we'll just let them sit out there for a little while and just figure it out. You know, any other captain would have gone, oh, my God, what do we do? Send out the troops. So how would you find all that? Well, I think it was interesting that he sort of remained fairly calm in that. I would have actually, if I was in charge, I would have said, well, I have no communication. The ship's firing. Send some other ships out and mm. and keep them all out. Not, yep. not, not, not let them in because that was just crazy. There were a yeah, few he, things he, in this he, episode. He didn't which... get sucked in. Good old Vance. He's a, he's a bit of a smart cookie, so I think that's certainly working for him. Um, I like the fact he made a reference, um, especially a bit later on, that there's actually a Federation president. It's like, oh, who knew that? So, uh, yeah, and apparently the rumour going around is apparently that president is due to be replaced in a couple of weeks anyway, and he's spending all his time on the golf course. But, uh, you know, let's not worry <laughs> about that president, shall we? Let's move on to the next one. So, um, yeah, I thought that was actually kind of cool. And, of course, a lot of people speculating who the president might be but or where that will even see them. But uh, the fact that there is actually a president, considering the Federation is so small now, I thought that was actually quite interesting. So Because we all th always thought Vance was in charge. What do you reckon? Well, I, I think maybe it's another ploy. I think he might be the president, but not actually uh, let anyone know, because if you knew that he was the president and the admiral, then you might have issues. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be a complete shock and it'll probably be some previous Star Trek actor that comes in as the president. You know, it could be, who knows, a, a generation relative of, say, Captain Sulu from all those years ago, because, you know, George Takai hasn't made an appearance in this series yet, so who knows? Uh, and considering Jonathan Frakes directed the episode, it could be a, another um, Generations actor, so we have to wait and see on that one, I think. Wouldn't that be funny if it was uh, George Takai playing uh, the president, and they go, Mr. President, we're being attacked by, like, uh, yeah, Emerald Chain, and he goes, oh, my. <laughs> 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 um I thought it was very, very cool. They hark back to the, uh, the the Buster Keaton film from all those episodes ago. So there's a whole lot of things that are occurring in the past now and I've got past episodes that are now reoccurring in this one. Of course, the return of Zara, the dude from Medium, he comes back. He's got a bit of frostbite on the fingers. He's not a happy camper and he's out there to sort of kick a few heads on behalf of Osiris. So uh, how did you find all that? It was a nice little reveal, wasn't it? Oh, it was. And he's doing a bit of a Luke Skywalker with the, the glove on one hand later on and, you know, going, well, have a look at my hand. It's been frostbitten. Well, it's like, surely you have medical technology that could fix that because, you know. Uh, but it looks yeah, cool, know. though. You know, he gets to whip the glove off and people go, oh, my God, he's so tough. He didn't bother getting it fixed. So uh, there you go. But, yeah, it's a good point, though. Yes, they definitely do have the medical technology. They're rebuilding the $6 million man sort of scenario. Yep. Yeah, him coming back seemed to add a bit of – a bit more to it uh him remembering tilly saying you should have shot me back then and her sort of looking at him like yeah you're right i should have but uh, uh none of this would be happening in this way if i did did you like it and a lot of people have dialed into this that when zara walks on and says yeah tilly yeah we took over the ship in 12 minutes you know you, you sucked as a captain and it, uh some people have um interpreted that as saying this is echoing what the audience thought when Tilly was first given command in the first place. I mean, like last time when the ship got taken over, she didn't do that good a job. And obviously the ship get, did get taken over. So Zara just walks in and, oh, it was just so easy. It was like, it was like, it was nothing. And I think the audience is thinking, yeah, Tilly was the wrong choice uh, for Captain Material. It probably should have been uh, the uh, blonde lady, Nielsen, 
who doesn't appear in this episode at all, apparently. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, so I, people interpret that as saying, yeah, he's actually saying what the audience is thinking, which I thought was actually kind of cool. But I was good to see him back. Um, yeah, because, you know, after when I think it was the first episode of the season, he just disappeared and go, okay, he's just the bad guy of the week. And then he's, he's returned here and, and uh, he's, he's on the you know, Emerald Chain sort of payroll. And uh, I thought that was actually kind of cool, actually. Uh, Rin, of course, comes back. <clears throat> Uh, the thing, the first thing I found about Rin is I thought he's changed colour, and then I realised I realised afterwards they've washed his hair, and his hair is now white, which has made his blue really, really stand out. Because in the past he was always dirty and filthy and whatever else, but um, but when he first comes in, you go, oh, hang on, Rin, which side are you sort of playing for? And as we find out later on, he's actually playing for the good guys, uh, which is uh, kind of groovy. So uh, how'd you find all that? <clears throat> Well, that's because he's following Book and wants to do something right now. You know, he was he was afraid of Asira to begin with, and obviously that's how he had his antenna cut off. Yep. Uh, but now he wants to sort of see how that goes. But that doesn't end too good for him because he gets sort of, you know, blasted. Yep. Yep. And um, Book stands there, does the old, no! And yep. Like, what are you going to do, man? Seriously. So, uh, but that also brings brings the 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 new scientist in yep. to sort of see how Asaya actually is because he thought she was all good and all this sort of stuff and had heard rumors but didn't want to believe it and now he's seeing for himself uh which means i got the feeling he might change sides yeah that was really intriguing because um <clears throat> the thing that this episode has really brought up uh is the fact that Osira does actually have a a, a, a softer side if you will uh, and he explains about his history with her when he was really young and he, she saved him and all the rest of it. And you're thinking, okay, well, if she played the sentimental card with him then, who else has she done it with along the way as well? And, of course, as we've, we've seen her as just being uh, the bad person, you know, just committing all these crimes and slavery and all the rest of it. And then you get the ultimate twist of, like, that when she's talking to Vance about saying, oh, no, I actually want peace for the Federation, you know, with the Starfleet and all the rest of it. And you're thinking, surely there's got to be a bit something dodgy in here. But Eli, the, the, the lie detector, is going, no, nah, it's all real, it's all real, unless she's got some kind of ability to block that sort of um, lie detector technology. But uh, that was really interesting. It took uh, put her character in a completely different about face. And I think that was quite intentional. You know, maybe the writers have said, we've made her out to be this bad person the whole way along, just like all other bad people, you know, baddies in, in these shows. Let's put a different spin on who she really is and just see what happens. Because I thought... Once the discovery ended up inside the Federation, oh, it's going to be all guns blazing. You know, we're inside inside the belly of the whale, as it were, and we're just going to cut loose of the photon torpedoes and have a whale of a time. Um, but uh, it didn't actually happen that way at all. And I thought, okay, we, we're going down a different path here. And a bit of un unpredictability uh, is good for everybody. So, uh, but yeah, that right, you were right with the, um, the, the sequence with the scientist, especially his conversation with Stamets, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. And you get to understand the mycelial network a little bit more, if, in case you'd forgotten. Uh, was very, very groovy, I think. Yeah, look, I think Osira has the ability to manipulate the situation yep. as she wants. You know, she managed to, to take discovery quite easily, didn't even raise a sweat. Yep. She, she wants what she wants. She, she got him because he was good and then he became a great scientist. Yep. So why would you not um, keep him on side in any way, shape or form, you know, Kill the, kill the ones that you don't need that are going to cause you trouble. So a master manipulator, I think, you know, is, is sort of where she's sort of sitting. So she might be able to get past most of the Eli's um, detection, mm. you know, because she's had to, she's been in, in con yep. constant conflict the whole time. So, you know, where most people's stress levels up here for telling yep. a lie, yep. hers is probably down here and doesn't even register. You know, there was that one shot that she said something and he said, that's a lie. Yep. You know, and yep. then Vance turned around. Now, if the lie detector was, truthful on both sides and it should have been it should have picked up on Vance because he looked like he was sort of just um massaging certain sentences to make her sort of seem like he's on her side but you know there was it felt like he was sort of saying yeah I just want to see what you say and I'm going to say this and this to get you to to mess up somewhere and yeah it just that the first part of the conversation he was very defensive and then once they came back and they started eating the replicated food which We'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. um, the whole conversation sort of felt like it had changed. It almost felt like for some reason they'd shot it like five days apart because there was a whole attitude adjustment on both mm -hmm. sides and it just sort of seemed a little bit sort of strange and then they continued on sort of thing. So, um, My first thought is uh, just prior to all this when they first met, so Osira and the, um, the troops uh, end up on the ship 
and they're standing on the floor. And it's, of course, it's a holodeck floor. And the first thing I thought of is Vance could easily just get the floor to disappear. And she'd go, ah, yeah. that's it, problem solved. There you go. No more no more Osiris. She's gone bye-bye. <laughs> but um, it was interesting how um, – because we, 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 yeah, you're right. We didn't actually know what she was going to suggest once she got into the discussion with Vance. It was like, how are we going to play this out? And if she plays a completely different card to what everybody's expecting, yes, I actually want a peace treaty. Here it is. It's all drawn up. We get to see it in midair. Uh, and he gets to sort of read through it and flick through it and all the rest of it. And according to Eli, everything she's saying is correct. That would put you on edge. You're thinking, all right, I did not see this coming. How am I going to deal with this? How am I going to play this card? And, uh, and throughout the entire discussion, she seems to be very genuine. But Deep down, you're thinking, surely not. But I thought it was really intriguing how they tried to deal with that issue of saying, well, okay, if you're genuine in your um, wantingness to have peace, then you yourself have to be put on war crimes trials Mm -hmm. because of the crimes that you've committed. And it's like, that's a pretty big ask. And there's a few people who have been discussing as to whether that makes any sense or not. You know, do the sins of the past um, carry over to the sins of the present? Or is the what she's trying to do enough to say, okay, will uh, sign this treaty, but you yourself will be pardoned because you've instigated this fantastic thing. And I looked at it as like Vance is um, like a Federation like uh, idealist, whereas Osira is effectively a realist. She's aware of the way the world is. And there's clearly, okay, one half over here, which is a Federation, the other half here, which is Emerald Train, put them together. And it could probably be a really cool thing, even though most of the, uh, the the galaxy would be like thinking, okay, that's sort of like um, you're dancing with the devil in the pale moonlight effectively. But uh, yeah, I, it was a really, really good sequence and one that we definitely did not see coming. At any point, you're waiting for her to just pull out a gun and just kind of blast and dance and all this. And it didn't happen. And I, I was actually very impressed. That was that one. Yeah, I think there's quite a lot of people sort of twitching their heads as to what the deal is. So uh, yeah. yeah, well, it's, cool. it's like it's like any business that wants to join with another business. They've yep. got to make negotiations and that yep. sort of thing. And, you know, some people win and some people lose and all that sort of, uh, yep. sort of thing happens. So, but I thought, yeah, it makes sense. She can't be the head of it. Uh, it's sort of, it's, it's checks and balances, I guess, if, if you want to talk that, but maybe one's out of self-defense and one's just out of, you know, mm. she kills, um, what's his name on the bridge, you know, just, blows him away sort of thing and mm. and he's done so maybe that's the difference but you know it's all depends on interpretation totally group now you're talking about the replicated um thing earlier what was interesting and a few people have picked up on this is that i mean clearly makes that gag about the apple being made of you know human mm. human waste and whatever else uh the key thing is from a from a trek no babble sort of point of view uh clearly the repl- replicators in the 32nd century are working from matter to matter conversion which is completely different to the 24th century version, which is matter from energy conversion. So maybe after the burn, all the regular uh, replicators stopped working uh, properly and they actually then had to reconfigure them to go, okay, that's matter to matter conversion. So in other words, you need matter to create the food. So if by some chance everybody nicked off from the Federation and sort of took their ships and went bye-bye and you're sitting there all by yourself, um, you actually have to create effectively your own food because they're converting it from matter to matter. And I assume it's organic matter on both occasions. So uh, I thought that was an interesting one, but it was a, it was a cute line. Uh, it's like, okay, you're sort of seeing a little bit of if pseudo vulgarity from the side of Vance, but uh, how did you make all that? Well, first of all, it sort of surprised me because it was the first swear word we've heard in a couple yeah. of episodes. Yeah. So, and when he said it, I thought, hang on, and I had to go back and listen to it again. Yeah. Um, it catches off, doesn't it? It's like, hey, did yeah. you say what I thought he said? <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Now, unless that was to put her off to not yeah. eat, you know, yeah. he just ate yeah. naturally. But the thing is, if you did that in real life, eventually you'd get no nutrients from it anyway, because if you're reprocessing waste over and over again, it actually becomes nothing. Yep. So they would have to put an additive in there. It could have been worse, you know. It could have said, you know, what does that taste like that to you? Oh, it tastes a bit like a carrot. Oh, that's Anderson Ricky from, <laughs> from a few weeks back. He had a bit of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it just move on it was all good if we patched him up he was okay <laughs> um some other things that came up uh like um like michael like is is going through the ship <laughs> has, to, has to take out a dude so instead of just knocking the dude out and just you know put a you know just plugging him as this big old fight scene and of course she gets stabbed in the process and some people have now interpreted this as her diehard persona because she takes on the diehard thing she calls through the tubes got loses her shoes the whole thing, and I was just like, holy guacamole, where are we going with this? And I thought, you've taken dudes out before. Why does one dude have to be so damn hard for you? So I was like, oh, golly, wally, wally. And, and uh, yeah, some people thought that was a, a bit bit sort of like silly. So how'd you make that? Yeah. Oh, look, I, I think that whole thing of 
A, it means that Federation people don't wear socks in their <laughs> shoes because, you know, that, that could have just knocked her socks off. Secondly, her boots coming off that quickly when she's getting pulled. Yeah. That, like if you know and I know from wearing costumes, boots don't come off that easy. So, you know, maybe in the 29th century they do. Tell you what. What some fans were thinking is like when that lady was hanging onto a boot and the, the, all the wind is pushing out, she was going to pull out the gun, the phaser, and go, yippee kaya, <laughs> oh. <laughs> doing a die hard thing and pulling the trigger. Know. You know, a bit of the hands Gruber moment. So, uh, yeah, there yeah, was, very, very There funny was too stuff. many, there was that and the other guys. Why wouldn't you just go up and shoot them really quickly and continue on? Why would you waste your time if you're on a stealth mission to then take two minutes to take this guy out? It just, it, there, yeah, that was some of the negatives of, that I found in this episode. It didn't make any sense. Yeah, true. But it was very cool when you see her body sort of floating in bits and pieces through the front windscreen, though. And uh, I thought that was actually very, and, very, very clever. And the two yeah. boots are on either side of her, if you paid yeah, careful yeah. attention. Uh, no, no, very, very good stuff. Um, so we get to see in the big fight scenes the fact that the crew get to reenact their Mirror Universe counterparts and actually get into a bit of fight scenes. And it was good to see. Um, there's a lot of really, really good moments. So we mentioned about the Osira Vance discussion uh, and Booker and Rin and what happens with those two guys. But of course, the key one is with Michael and Stamets, right? And she's got to put him in the in the stasis field and, and shoot him at the airlock thing to so protect him from uh, Emerald Chain. And of course, he's completely losing his, his nuts because he wants to go back and pick up Culber and uh, Deer and even Saru uh, from where they are. And uh, that, I thought, was a really, really telling moment and he kind of just completely loses it and he said, you know, we came here to protect you and, you know, so you weren't alone and all that. And that was, I think, one of the pivotal moments of the entire series, or at least this season, where it was like, instead of people playing characters and they're playing them in a certain persona, to say, break all those um, inhibitions down and just say what you really think, what's really buried deep down inside of the subconscious and just come out and go, you know what? Um, these people I really care about, they're, they're dying. I'm here with you. I'm not happy about it. You're about to kick me out of the ship. And he just completely like cuts loose. And I thought that was a really, really, really telling moment. And and, uh, and who knows, when they eventually get this all sorted out and Stamets and Michael meet back up again, uh, and of course, you know, they will, um, how are they going to play that one out when he says, uh, yeah, I actually said that um, a few things that were probably a bit uh, close to the bone. What do you think of that? Well, I like the fact that eventually she uses the Vulcan nerve pinch on him because yeah. that sort of has a slowing down, um, which means that anyone can use it, not just Vulcans. True. Uh, secondly, I I think that she should have had a little bit more emotion in that scene. You know, like I get bored with her crying all the time. Yeah. But she should have had, had yeah. some, something a little bit more with that. You know, there should have been, it should have been almost, he should have been yelling at her, you know, not, I thought it was too toned down. I thought it should have been more high you know, energy, that sort of thing, because he, he was sort of, yeah, he was sort of, uh, you know, bound and everything, but he should have been yelling at her like, you know, we were here for you and only you basically, mm -hmm. and, you know, we sacrificed all this other stuff. So I found it could have been a lot more uh, in that scene. Yep. And then she would have had, cause she sort of, she goes to almost have a tear and then she sort of sucks it all in. It's yep. like, hang on, you've had time to stab, a, you know, get stabbed by a guy that you're wrestling. You've got all this other stuff going on. You can't take an extra moment to, to do this you know it just it just felt like it was lacking a fraction yeah that's a that's a fair call and a few fans do get a bit antsy when uh, michael's having a few tears and get a bit a bit emotional i think they're sort of a bit tired of it uh, but uh, one thing that michael did do though is put a call into mother in the middle of the tubes is like oh, i've still got time to ring home it's like hey mum, how's it going <laughs> hey, don't forget to put the kettle on and right at the very end of the show the end of the episode the robots turn up our robots that we've been hanging sort of a bit, a bit of shit on for the past uh <laughs> yeah x men of episodes they turn up, the three of them roll up. Who are you doing, Louis, if you know you're silent running? And, uh, yes, they are the Sphere Data. And fans, or some fans who really know their Short Treks uh, miniseries have just gone, oh, my God, that is Zora, the start of the Discovery's AI. And it was like, it did work for some people, and other people thought, oh, no, not cute robots. That's the last thing we need in this show. So uh, what did you make of that, the return of the dots? Well... Cute robots who do Vulcan symbols with four fingers or four <laughs> sort of thing. I thought that was kind of cute. And, you know, they're going to cause a lot of trouble. And I think that's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, it could be the ultimate uh, escape clause for the story. Um, have you got any final words on the turning of the tide? No, it's called the... Uh, there is a tide. Yes, there is. <laughs> and it is high, as we said earlier. Before we rate it in Federation logos, Mr. MPS, what did you think of There is a Tide? 
Uh, look, I'm back to book ship. It changing as it goes through the, the sequence. Like for crying out loud, make it one shape, yep. make it slimline and go through it. Stop changing it. Look, yep. I don't know if that's because they need the special effects crews doing extra work or what, yeah, but I will tell you what, yep. it's a waste of time. Yep. It really didn't agree. doesn't need to happen that way. Um, Michael's hidden stealth bracelet was kind of cool. I don't know. You know, finally it's up on the up on the arm, not on the hand, you know. So it's not actually that easy to get to. The fact that her her other thing turns into a blaster mm. and you go well that could have been used a fair bit more yes. uh and i like the fact that when tilly uh when they've taken back the 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 room and then they go into the weapons hall um they get all the guns out and the robots come and tilly turns around like dirty harry double guns blazing and it's like oh yeah you know, that's- it had a real charlie's <laughs> angels moment didn't it because all facing in different directions <laughs> yeah, yeah i thought I thought that was great. And to see Tilly now stepping up higher, you know, she, I think, you know, given time, she will make good number one and then eventually a good captain. Well, she's obviously a tad pissed off after what's happened and she feels clearly responsible. And the fact, of course, her captain is still actually stuck in a place, you know, dying of goddamn radiation poisoning. Yeah, she wouldn't be the happiest camper in the world. So, yes, you probably find she gets a bit of an attitude adjustment right here. So, yeah. yeah. Other than that, uh, I, I think, look, the episode was had too many highs and lows in it, like too many goods and negatives. And at this point in time, I think I'm just going to give it a three. Wow. There you go. The penultimate episode for the season. There you go. Uh, for myself, <clears throat> I like the idea that uh, Asira was a bit more than just a typical baddie. I mean, she could have come, as we said earlier, coming with all guns blazing and all the rest of it, but chose not to do that. And has actually had met with uh, Vance and had the big discussion and sort of presented a side of her story that we did not see coming. And I think that was uh, a really, really good. Um, the idea that um, Michael's save the day heroics, the diehard persona thing is probably getting wearing a bit thin now. She's just the, the ultimate good guy who just fixes up everything. When there's a problem, I'll come in there, I'll save the day and rescue the crew and all the rest of it. That's probably getting a, a tad wearisome. It's be good if it was somebody else sort of filling those uh, shoes, get it shoes because she lost her shoes uh, uh, instead of her uh, all the time. Um, but there were some really, really good character moments, one-on-one ones, you know, with the, the scientists and Stamets and Stamets and Michael and all the rest of Vance and Osara. And they are the things that make the show work, you know, really good writing, really good character moments. And they're the bits that I dial into. So I was a bit up and down on the whole thing, but I've decided to go for four Federation logos, um, knowing that uh, it probably could have been a bit better, as you said. But uh, I was still relatively satisfied uh, with what I got. And I do like unpredictability, with the exception of the three robots turning up at the end. That was like a, uh, yeah, right, whatever. <clears throat> but, hey, Buster Keaton got to come back. That alone has got to be a good thing. So there you go. Very good. All right. So next week apparently is the end of the season. Holy guacamole. How about that? So uh, the episode 13, we'll have to wait with that with bated breath. See if the Vulcans and the Romulans come in and save the day and make everything great and wonderful again. Someone's clearly going to come in from the outside and lead us into the fourth season and uh, be absolutely fantastic. So we'll have to wait and see how that all pans out. So in the interim, make sure you keep on trekking and we'll catch it next week. Ready to go. Okay. Bye for now.